You know, it never did occur to me when the Empire took over the galaxy, there was still the people of the Republic and the people of the Separatists. So this episode was interesting. <laughs> yeah, so how's everyone doing today, guys? My name is Tico's, and this is The Bad Match, episode 10, Common Grounds. So... Yeah, this is an interesting episode in terms of how the team goes at this situation. So, okay, sorry, I'm a little tired. So after after rescuing Omega in the last episode, the team goes back to Sid and they have to get have to do another job. But Sid or I'm a Hunter doesn't want Omega to go with them because he. One is worried that Omega's safety is at risk, and two, she's already been through a lot, so having her go on another mission with them is probably just going to be a little too more hectic. <laughs> so he leaves her with Sid, and even he doubts the <laughs> the trust of Sid, <laughs> and a part of me wants to, but I'm like, well, oh, leaving her with Sid is probably better than whatever mission they were going to go on, and we I like how you kind of put the pieces together as to what their mission is because they open the episode up on this separatist planet, Araxis, which looks kind of like Earth. I kind of, I mean, you know, and the separate and their the senator uh, was giving a speech, but there were Imperials everywhere. And at first, you know, he was saying like, "Oh, they're here to help. They're here to make our planet thrive and all that." But then he started saying like, "But we." We sh you shouldn't, don't be, no, don't, don't fear them, don't let them control you, we are on planet, all that, so he was arrested for that, and so he then, and before that, though, he told the droid, no matter what happens, just go through the protocols that I gave you, and so basically, once he committed treason against the Empire, and he was taken prisoner, the droid went off, and contacted Sid, and so Sid gave the Bad Batch the job to go to this planet and rescue him, and so that's pretty much the beef of this episode, is this is the bad match on the Separatist planet rescuing the Senator from the Empire, and Hunter, Wrecker, and Tech are all fine doing this, but Echo is very, he's, he has, they, even Tech points out, he mentions many times in this episode that he doesn't like this, he doesn't trust Separatists because, well, I mean, you know, <laughs> Echo spent his entire time fighting Separatists, and then, then he was captured by the Separatists, and he was turned into this droid thing by the Separatists, so it's understandable. So why he kind of has beef with the Separatists, <laughs> and he doubts pretty much everything that's going on. He doubts the plan, he doubts that they'll be safe, he doubts that it's going all that and so um i do like though obviously by the end he gives in and he realizes that even though there, he's a separate that this person that they're rescuing is a separatist one there's a bigger threat out there two everyone's pretty much a person you know everyone even though they're on opposite sides there is that humanity in them because the separate this man if you told me, yeah, I'll admit, if you didn't tell me he was Separatist, I probably would have assumed he was Republic. But because they tell us that he's Separatist, then that, of course, makes you wonder, yeah, well, not everyone was bad, you know, and it's not black and white, as we've learned for a long time. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's pretty much the main plot of the story. The side plot of the story is obviously Omega with Sid, and they're just at her pub, bar, whatever they keep calling it, parlor, uh, yeah, I think it's parlor, and Omega, of course, is bored out of her mind, and she just wished that the team took her, and Sid kind of gives her a hard time by saying, like, if you weren't so worthless, maybe they would have, they maybe would have, they could have took you, and I'm, like, thinking, okay, that's harsh, because, yeah, I mean, I understand Omega being annoyed by the team not taking her and I get that because she's a kid she's frustrated about that but at the same time she's a kid you know and she's still learning these things she's still 
trying to be something. She still has a lot to go through. And she's already gone through a lot, you know? I mean, escaping a bounty hunter, two bounty hunters, and nearly getting killed. Like, she kind of does need a break, so... But, of course, at the same time, Sid is, you know, Sid. So she tries to figure out how to get to Omega in a more comforting way, but <laughs> it doesn't work. However, things kind of change when the um, Omega is watching Sid play that, um, I never know what it's called, that that game, that that Beast Wars game that you see, that they all, you always see characters play in Star Wars. Like, she's playing it against the her, her recurring customers, and it seems like it's not going to work. She's losing, and even... But then there's a moment where, you know, Sid's, like, about to press a, press a button to make her move, and Omega's like, I wouldn't do that if I were you. And Sid's looking, and she's like, presses the button. Then her... Next thing you know, she loses. So Omega, of course... So that's when you kind of put the pieces together, then Omega has her way. And it soon finds out that Omega is really good when it comes to strategy. And that's kind of one thing that you, maybe that's her like dominant, her, her skill set is like, she's really tactical. She has great strategy. And as we find out in this episode, yes, because when the team gets back, you know, they, the parlor is filled and you have people making bets on Omega, like saying whether or not she can continue winning and she does she every single opponent that she goes up against she beats because she knows the strategy she knows how to win every single time which is crazy <laughs> but it's also cool i like that i like that omega is pretty much the idea the strategist because as we've seen throughout this series she has shown how to think on her feet she has shown how she can escape some certain situations but we never seen her actually get the chance to just sit down, analyze the situation, and be allowed to speak her mind. You know, beforehand, she's just observing everything. And that's probably how she does it. She observes the situation, and then she comes up with the strategy of how to overcome it. I like a simple game, you know? <laughs> but, yeah, so, uh, cool. But, okay, so back on, um... Back on Raxus, when they're, um, you know, when they're rescuing the senator, obviously, like I mentioned before, Echo is really against this. You know, he's like, how do we know this isn't a trap? How do we know this isn't this? How do we know this isn't that? And the droid that they're working with was the droid that the senator told to go through the protocol. And so she's leading him to this, to his house to rescue him. And I'll admit, this was really cool to watch because, you know, it felt like, uh, it felt like this... This Rainbow Six Siege Black Ops kind of, or Call of Duty mo moment, you know, there's, you know, because it starts with them infiltrating the, infiltrating the the building, going around, just taking out guards left and right, or stunning um, troopers left and right, excuse me. They get to, they get to the basement and they pull off, you know, they throw a smoke grenade and then they stun everyone inside and they get the senator out, they get moving and the next thing you know, they're outside and you have all these the little walkers chasing them and again they they hijack one by on the, because they get they escape to the top of the building they grapple down they zip line down take out all the troopers take the tank all of a sudden the tank another tank shows up starts shooting they get hit and then you know it's so like so much is going on it's so cool and you have a couple of moments as well like there was uh, there was this one cool shot where hunter slides underneath the, the walker's legs and starts just shooting, like, stunning all the troopers to the right of him. It was such a cool moment. I, and, I mean, seeing stuff like that all the time, but it's just, every time it happens, it's awesome. It just gets me every time. It's awesome. But, um, yeah, so it's pretty, it's a lot of fun. It's really cool to see the team in this situation going against their, tr going against pretty much themselves. But again, it's more stun. You're not trying to kill anyone because they're just trying to get this guy out of here. They're not trying to run for their lives because they're being hunted, I guess, for the most part. But yeah, so they're able to escape. They're able to even the even the uh, senator is gets him out of there because he tells him to go down this one alley that is seemingly a dead end, but is not. There actually was a secret passage that they had to blow up to get through and they do they get out they escape 
And I even do like this moment where they get to the ship and the, and the senator, you know, he stops and he looks and he's like, no, I, I, I can't, no, wait, I can't abandon my people. I gotta, you know, and he's like looking off into the woods and thinking like, maybe I should stay. But then Echo's like, you, we, I understand, but right, but you can live the fight another day if you come with us. And I'm like thinking, yeah, he's not wrong because if he stays on his planet, he'll just be on the run hunted. He really can't do anything while he's on the run. So maybe if he gets off world, then he can try to do things. And of course, having to be Echo telling him to do that makes sense with how the episode was going with Echo. And so, yeah. <laughs> But it's cool. I really like the moments like that, even though it's something you would expect, I guess, with how they set this episode up with Echo. But yeah, so they get back to the plant. They get back to Sid and Omega because she's an absolute goddess of the of this of the Beast Wars game. Wins so much money that they pay off Sid's debts, so they technically don't owe her anything. But obviously. So six episodes ago, so who knows where we're gonna go from here? But um, Omega being the strategist is very cool to see, and even Hunter is impressed. Of course, she and Hunter have a moment, or she has, a mo or he has a moment with Omega, excuse me, and then he makes a bet with her, saying like, if she beats him in the game, she can come with them, and no questions asked. And of course, the episode ends with them starting up the game. And leaving it up for grabs, like, oh, who's gonna win? But, I mean, I think we know who's gonna win. It's gonna be Omega. But, again, I, I mean, I like how they have an episode like this, you know, where Omega isn't with them. You know, she's staying behind because Hunter told her to stay behind because, as he said, like, then, you, you know, she's like, I'm part of the team. And he's like, well, then a good, then you as a soldier will obey my orders. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> But it makes sense after everything has happened, you know, like she has nearly died a couple of times. She's been kidnapped twice. She escaped with her life. She nearly died escaping with her life. So it makes sense that Hunter would be like, okay, you know what? You're just going to stay here. Stay put. You need a break. You're going to be safe here. All that. But Omega obviously doesn't want that. She wants to be with them. She wants to help them. She wants to do anything she can to do that. And seeing what she what has been revealed by her in this episode, she can definitely be useful, you know, coming up with this, coming up with plans. But I mean, Hunter comes up with great plans, but maybe Omega will come up with one that is, I wouldn't say better than Hunter's, but maybe more creative. Like, maybe kind of like Sokka and Avatar. You know how Sokka came up with some pretty clever ideas and strategies throughout the series. Maybe that's what Omega will do when they're out in combat and out in action, you know, like, because Hunter, again, you know, like, his strategies are great. They are not, they, they have yet to fail. I mean, they're still alive. All of them are still alive. So obviously they're doing something right. But maybe Omega will bring a, a new spin to it. So, yeah. All right. Yeah, that's everything I got. So, um, yeah, so... Six episodes left. We'll see where we go from here. So, ho hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you liked it, leave a like. Want to leave a comment, leave a comment. And if you want to subscribe, subscribe. You don't have to. I'm just saying thank you all for watching. And we will see you in the next one.